Uh, good morning, everyone. We've had, good morning. Last, morning. we've had a last minute substitution here, and um, Ian's not feeling too well, so you're stuck with me this morning. Um, just got a few announcements to start us off. There is no midweek this week, with being half term. We'll not be having a midweek Sunday meeting, but it will resume the following week with prayer together. Uh, good News Club is starting soon for P1s to P7s every Tuesday night, 6 30, 7 30. This is a time of games, craft, memory verses, Bible stories, and more. Registration is needed. You can find the links to that on the church Facebook page or speak to myself or May after the service, and we can send you that one. The Wee Cafe is starting on Wednesday, the 3rd of November, 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the McCloy Hall. It's just somewhere to get a warm drink, a sweet treat, and a warm welcome, and it's completely free of charge. The North Belfast Ulster Scots Festival, and um, Dr. David Hume will be talking about Ulster Scots this Wednesday. That's from 11 to 1 p.m. Everyone is welcome, and there's more info from May Adamson. I'm not sure the venue for that. Is that? It's here. It's here in the church, yeah. In the McCroy Hall, then. And then Alexandra PM, our next of the five week series for meeting is tonight. Um, in our series of stories of everyday mission, it gives us a chance to hear from a variety of people um, over the next five weeks who are living out their faith in everyday situations. Tonight we'll hear from members of the Nightlight team as they share stories on how God reaches people where they are in the early hours of a Saturday morning. Our first praise this morning is Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? If you almost have this. <laughs>
Let us all pray together. Our God, thank you for the wonderful hymn that we have just been singing, reminding us of your great love for us. Help us to find this anchor in our lives day by day, so that in all the different and sometimes difficult times of life, we can be grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us together this morning for the enrollment service of our Boys Brigade Company in Alexander Presbyterian Church. We ask your blessing on all of us gathered here. We pray for our anchor boys, the members of our junior section and company section, and all the members of our staff who share in looking after us week by week. We pray for mums and dads and all of our congregation. And we remember also all our former members who have been in the 50th company in past years. We thank you for our founder, Sir William Alexander Smith, and the vision he had to bring young men and boys into a place where they could learn about Jesus and his love for each one. Thank you for our object as we seek to advance Christ's kingdom among boys, learning obedience, reverence, discipline, and self-respect. May this be our aim as we share in worship today and make our promises before you. Help us each Thursday as we attend the company to enjoy all its activities and the friendships that we make with each other. We would remember any who are not well today, especially one of our officers, Mervyn McCormick, and our chaplain, Ian, and his little son, Harry. We ask, Lord, for your healing touch and make them all well again. We thank you that we can now meet back in church again and ask that the COVID-19 problem will soon ease as more people are vaccinated and follow the regulations and instructions. Please keep all our members safe. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will guide Jason as he speaks to us, that we will listen carefully and all of us will be blessed and challenged by being here this morning. And now could we all just share and pray together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's good to see so many of our boys here this morning from Boys Brigade and one of them, one of our company section boys, Josh Oliver, is going to come and read for us from 1 Samuel chapter 16. Verses 1 to 13. The reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. Samuel notes David. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I rejected him as king for Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go if Saul hears about it? He will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are too mighty for me, the one that I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said when he arrived at Bethlehem. The elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes. 
in peace I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eli and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider the appearance or the height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There are still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending to the sea. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and brought him in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Son of them to run up. All right, thank you, Josh. Um, in Ian's absence this morning, I'm going to invite Wesley to come and lead our time of enrollment. Well, uh, as honorary captain of the company, it gives me a great privilege this morning to be, uh, first of all, part of this enrollment service and to have this opportunity to, to lead in the act of enrollment. Um, it comes in different parts. Uh, we all have a part to play, the boys, and the, then the, your parents, and then the members of the congregation. So we'll, we'll, we'll go along, first of all, with the, the, the company. Could I ask the, the following BB officer to stand just in their place? That would be uh, lieutenants in charge, Trevor Wilson and Philip Massey. And then, as you've already heard, uh, Merlin McCormick is only able to be with us this morning. And then warrant officers, Stephen Barr, Jordan Barr, Kyle Barr, and Darrell Marshall. And then helpers, Tess Lum, and I believe that Rachel would be normally with us, but unable to be a Rachel Chapman this morning. Officers of the 50th Belfast Company of the Boys Brigade, you have been called by God to the work of caring for and training the boys of this company. Do you promise by your daily Christian witness and by working together to set an example which will help the boys to a real relationship with Jesus Christ as their friend, Saviour and Lord. We do. Do you promise to regularly pray for the boys and the work of the company and through diligent personal preparation seek to equip yourselves in every way possible for his service? Officers and helpers, do you promise to be regular in your attendance, helping to care for them and showing your commitment and leadership? You may now sit down again and we pray that God would give you the grace to be faithful to him and be successful in your work for him in the boys we need. Now we ask that our Lance Corporals and our Sergeant uh, to, to stand. That would be Joss and Jackson. Okay. As faithful, uh, reliable, and hardworking members of the company, that's the 58th, uh, we have shown faith and confidence in you by promoting you to these ranks. Do you now promise, with God's help, to support your officers loyally, to carry out your duties cheerfully? and at all times set a good example to the other boys of the company. Thank you. 
Thank you. May the Lord help you and set it and continue to set it as you continue to set an example to other boys. You may be seated. Now we want to enroll all the rest of the company. That's the junior section, company section, and anchor boys. Could I ask you to stand? You're all very valued members of our company, the 58th. It's good to have you along here this morning. I'm going to give you the opportunity to make your promise. And I'm going to ask you, each one, anchor boys, junior section, company section, and the answer is to the promise is, I do. Okay? Now, do you promise to be loyal members of the boys' brigade and to play a full part in the activities of the company? Anchor boys, do you promise? Junior section boys, do you promise? Good. And company section boys, do you promise? May God help you to keep your promises and may he help you to know Jesus Christ more and more each day. The one who is our great captain and saviour. You can sit down now, boys. Okay, now we're, we're going to uh, turn to the rest of the congregation. I'm going to put a question to them and your answer would be, we do. So can I ask the members of the congregation to stand? Do you promise to support the work of our company of the Boys Brigade and to pray for its leaders and boys and that God will keep them sure and steadfast as they grow in their faith? We do. And now you may be seated. Shortly we're going to have a short prayer about the work of the 50th and the leaders in the year ahead. And just before we do that, we're all going to, to sing again. And it's uh, one that's very, very popular. He's got the whole world in his hands. So let's join in worship together. <laughs> Lord, we trust that 
as we do not know everyone who is unwell or everyone who needs your help, we know that you do, and you will hear our prayers, even in the silence. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. And I'm going to invite one of our junior session boys, Ethan Dixon, up now, to read for us from John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. From John chapter 1, verse 43 to 51, Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from the Nathaniel house? Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said, of, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me, Nathaniel asked? Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, are you the Son of God? Are you the King of Israel? Jesus asked, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see the heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Thank you, Ethan. That was almost perfect time in there for me as well. Um, okay, I'm just going to chat this morning. Um, but I want you all to have a look at the screen first. I'm going to put a few pictures up of some famous people. All you have to do is tell me who they are, but there is a catch because each one of these photos is someone when they were very young. So that makes it a wee bit harder, but there might be a few clues in the photo. So, boys, anyone, can you tell me who that is? Do you know who it is? Mo Salah, best footballer in the world. Is it Mo Salah? It is Mo Salah. Of course it is. Okay, I think the next one's going to be a wee bit harder. Maybe some of your sisters will know who this is. Maybe some of the girls. Any ideas? No. Ethan thinks he knows again. Yeah? Is it Ariana Grande? Is it? I don't know. Is that Ariana Grande? I got to mix up the blue colors. Yeah? Ah, it is, yeah. Well, we'll see if sister helped them with that one, won't we? <laughs> okay, I think the adults might have a fair idea of the next one is, but do any of the boys and girls know see a hand up over there yet? Is it Boris Johnson? Do we even need to ask? Of course it's Boris Johnson. Spitting in the job. Okay, who, now this one's hard. Okay, but I'll give you a couple of clues. This, this guy has the exact same hairstyle today. And actually, if you look at what he's doing with his hand, that might give you a clue as to what his profession is. The rock. Is it the rock? It's not. Mm, it's not the rock. Any other ideas? The rock. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you know? <laughs> he's a boxer. He is a boxer. Okay. Does that help us? Okay. Two hands up the weird. John Cena. John Cena. This one's hard. Maybe some of the adults know. Do you think you know not? It's Tyson Fury. <laughs> Same verdict. dude. And look, he clearly wanted to be a boxer even from when he was a kid. Okay, the next one is either going to be really, really hard or really, really easy. But how do we think about it given that it's a black and white photograph? Okay, have a hand up down here. The Queen. It is the Queen. Okay. So, some of those guesses were easier than others, but um, think about how you were able to know who they were. Mo Salah was wearing a football kit, wasn't he? So that maybe gave us a good idea. And I was expecting someone to say Cristiano Ronaldo, I thought we would quite like him as well. So that was a big clue. Even as a baby, Tyson Fury was throwing a punch, and the picture of the Queen was in black and white, so we knew that it was a really old photo. We knew who these people are because we know what they're famous for. If they weren't famous, then they would just be random photos that really only their families care about. But imagine you didn't know who they were and their photos were shown. Would there be any way to know what you're looking at was the best footballer in the world, or the Queen, or the Prime Minister? Of course not, because 
We can't tell that just by looking at a random photo. In the passage that we read to us by Josh, Samuel is told to anoint a new king. Now, there already was a king, and his name was Saul. And actually, Samuel had anointed him to be the king as well. Saul had his own family, and yet Samuel was anointing someone who wasn't his son or his daughter or related to him in any way to be the next king. And that doesn't make sense, does it? Because we know that the king's son or daughter should be the next king or queen, except Saul wasn't a very good king at all. We have to go back into the history of Israel a wee bit for this. You see, Israel initially had no king. They were ruled by people called judges. But people saw that all the other countries around them had kings, and these kings were able to build armies and attack their neighbors. They were able to build armies like that, just using their words. Israel couldn't, couldn't organize an army like that so quickly, and so they got a bit afraid. You see, they forgot that God was protecting them. Anyway, they asked for a king, and God relented and decided to give them one. He chose Saul, and for a while, Saul was a really good king, until he, just like the rest of the country, forgot to trust God. Saul became so bad that he had to be replaced, and that's where we get the story that we just read. God told Samuel that he had to go and anoint one of Jesse's sons as the king, and we read as Jesse brings out his oldest son, Eliab, and Samuel thought this was the guy. Eliab must have been really tall and strong, but God didn't choose him. Despite looking the part, he wasn't the right person, and God told Samuel exactly why. Have a look at verse 7 in this passage. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God rejected Eliab and six of his brothers before Samuel saw David. And when David was brought out, he was anointed to be the next king of Israel. He was the youngest in his family. He was probably a teenager at this stage. And yet he was chosen to lead Israel ahead of all of his brothers and every other person in the country. He wasn't chosen because of his height, his strength, his intelligence, or any of the other qualities he had. He was chosen because, God, because he trusted God with all his heart, his mind, and his strength. And God saw that. Some of you might be wondering why I dashed out as Ethan was reading and why I reappeared wearing well, something different. Can anyone see what I'm wearing? Maybe you, maybe some of you are too far away. Um, yeah, what is it I'm wearing? I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a boys brigade jacket, yeah. Um, I might get in trouble with the other leaders because this is actually a third Antrim boys brigade coat. That was the BB I was with before and they gave me a coat to wear. If you saw me wearing this out in the street, what would you think about me? Yeah? Yeah, you would think I'm a member of that boys brigade, wouldn't you? Because only a fool would be wearing this coat if they weren't a member, wouldn't they? Either that or I'm really, really cool. But as it is warm in here, I'll take this off. Should be able to see what I'm wearing now. What am I wearing now? There's a hand up, right? Yep. Yep. A, a builder's jacket. Okay. Yep. That kind of answers the question I'm going to. It's a high vis jacket. This means people can see me. Everyone in the church should be able to see me now, anyway. Um, and if I was wearing this, you might assume I'm a builder. Yeah. Anything else you might assume? The last time I wore this, I was I was helping to organise an event. That way, people knew that. I was someone official, I was someone who could give them answers because, again, I'd look a bit silly walking about the streets wearing this, wouldn't I? You know, even if it was really dark, it would just be silly. I'm going to take this off as well because I, I do just look silly now. I'm wearing something else though. Can anyone see what I'm wearing now? Yep, hand right at the very, very back. It's a JD jacket, okay? I'm impressed to see that from there. Why on earth would I be wearing this? If you saw me wearing this in the street, what would you think about me? Yeah. That I work for JD. Yeah. Do I work for JD? No. no. I actually used to, so it's not that silly. But again, if I'm walking about wearing this, I'm going to look really stupid, aren't I? Because why would I be wearing it? Especially if I walk into another shop, you know, people think I might even work there. Again, it's quite wrong, so we'll get this up as well. But as we go down the layers of people, we understand you can't tell who I am just by looking at a JD jacket, just by looking at a high-vis jacket. You need to get 
right to the final layer when you get to know someone and you see what the most important thing is about a person. <laughs> so I wonder, I wonder just based on looking at me now, could you tell anything important about me here? I'm, a, I'm not a footballer. Footballers would wear it, but if I was walking about wearing this, maybe you think I'd be silly wearing it. I don't think I am silly wearing this. But what would you think about me? Yeah. Liverpool I'm a Liverpool supporter, and of course I'm wearing this today for obvious reasons, I hope. But when you're getting to know someone, you can't judge them based on what they're wearing. The first thing I was wearing, you'd have thought I was a member of Third Anthem BB. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. The second thing, you'd have thought I was a builder. I've never, I've never been building. But I've been that staff before. The third thing you thought was working for JD Sports, and I used to, but I don't anymore. And with this, you would think I'm a Liverpool fan, which I am, but that's not the most important thing about me, is it? We're able to tell stuff about a person, we think we're able to tell stuff about a person based on their appearance and based on what they're wearing, but in reality, it's not that important, is it? It's interesting, but does it really tell us who a person is on the inside? I don't think it does. God does not judge us by our appearance like others do, but he judges the heart and how we are on the inside. When we flip forward to the New Testament reading that Ethan read for us, we get an interesting scene here of Jesus calling Philip and Nathaniel to be his disciples. Nathaniel is only mentioned in the book of John and is usually mentioned with Philip. In the other Gospels, a guy called Bartholomew is mentioned with Philip so we can assume that they're actually the same person and there would have been a few other people in the Bible who had more than one name. Aside from what we find out here, though, we don't really know that much about Nathaniel, but it's clear that Jesus does. Philip's the one who tells Nathaniel to join him in following Jesus, and when Jesus meets him, he basically tells him straight away that he knows he's trustworthy. Naturally, Nathaniel's a wee bit confused by this because he'd never met Jesus before, and he probably wasn't a particularly well-known or famous person, and yet Jesus already judges his character, or rather, Jesus already knew his character. Can you imagine how you would feel if someone you'd never met knew these kinds of things about you? When Nathaniel asks how Jesus knows, um, he's told that Jesus saw him under the fig tree before Philip called him. We never really find out the significance of this fig tree, but clearly what Jesus was talking about meant something important to Nathaniel. The best idea we have is that Nathaniel probably prayed under the fig tree. We can only speculate what he was praying about. Um, but Jesus referring to this was enough for Nathaniel to know that Jesus was the Son of God. Maybe this tells us that um, Nathaniel had been praying to find the Messiah and that Jesus was the one he was looking for. The fig tree might have even been some kind of confirmation to Nathaniel. Jesus didn't call Nathaniel because he had a certain set of skills though, or was particularly popular. He called him because of what was going on in his heart. Like I said, we can only speculate about what Nathaniel had been praying about or what the scene of the fig tree actually meant. But it becomes clear that Nathaniel is seeking the Messiah because he gets his confirmation of who Jesus is. This tells me that Nathaniel, in his heart, is seeking a relationship with God. We can compare Nathaniel to David. David reigned as a good king. He made his first share of mistakes, but he also sought forgiveness for those. We can even read some of his prayers for forgiveness in the book of Psalms. David's often described as a man after God's own heart. This means he wanted to know God really well. In school, we're all expected to pass exams. If we do well, we can take that class to a high level. If we don't, we probably can't. At work, we're expected to have a certain set of skills. A dentist should be able to fix teeth. A mechanic should be able to fix cars. You can't get these jobs if you don't have these skills. And that's fair enough. I don't want a dentist fixing my car. I don't want a mechanic fixing my teeth either. Sometimes we can go a wee bit farther. We want our friends to be like us in many ways, usually liking the same things or having the same hobbies. Maybe that's the barrier that we put up to our friendship. We'll face barriers to everything in life except when it comes to God. God doesn't put up barriers for us. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, big or small, sporty or arty or anything else. There's a place in God's kingdom because he doesn't look at those things, the things people look at. He looks at the heart and when we're seeking a relationship with Jesus, we, all we have to do is seek, even if we make mistakes. Nathaniel followed Jesus for the rest of his life after meeting him, and he travelled the world telling people about him. We think he went as far as Armenia. David trusted in God his whole life. He was able to defeat Goliath using only stones. Well, we say he only used stones he won because God was with him. David sought God, and because he knew God, he knew 
he knew what God wanted from him. So when you meet people, remember how God sees them. Try not to judge someone based on what they look like. This might be hard, but also take encouragement. If someone else judges you by your appearance, remember how God sees you. God sees what's on the inside, and that is what's important. Remember, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you that you can see who we really are on the inside. Help us not to judge people by their appearance, but to see people how you do. And Lord, let us take heart knowing how you see us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, we're going to stand and sing our closing hymn, God of Grace, Amazing Wonder. And then you can remain standing at the end for the National Anthem and Benediction. <laughs> Be with us all, evermore. Amen.